Hi, welcome to your midweek. It's Pastors Morgan and Anne. To continue some staff updates, over the past month you've heard how we have many transitions happening here on staff. Part of that transition is my upcoming departure as one of your full-time pastors here at Calvary Baptist Church of Denver. My last Sunday with you all will be June 2nd as one of your pastors. And so in preparing for that transition, staff relations along with Pastor Ann have worked really hard to figure out what dynamics can happen uh, to cover the responsibilities I was overseeing and prepare in other ways for other needs that were already presenting themselves. One of those were was to hire Bobby Luke. So Bobby has been our office administrator coming up next week on a month, which is very exciting. And Bobby is being trained and learning all the dynamics to his uh, job description. And we are so grateful for his flexibility, willing to learn, and just the, the capacity at which he is here to support not just uh, the congregation, but our pastors. And so we're really grateful for that. Another key piece that has already transitioned is that Pastor Alice is now overseeing faith formation and on-site missions. And so on-site missions includes blessings and family promise. Um, host weeks. And so she is already learning those dynamics. She's reached out to all of our small group leaders and church school class leaders to begin preparing for the fall. And so she has been able to learn before she goes on parental leave. And we're so grateful that um, she is able to do that we're recording before she heads out on leave. So we have no special announcement of baby or anything. Um, but we know that as she heads on parental leave this coming week, that she is entering in um, to a new season of how she pastors here. And I am so grateful to see what ministry she does with faith formation and missions. Uh, two other areas of my responsibilities, uh, youth ministry and congregational life, uh, those will now be overseen by minister-to-be Angela Letter. Uh, we'll have more about that, but Angela will be minister to students, families, and congregational life. And she has shifted into my old office, which is now her office. So when you walk into the church office, if you've never come to visit me, um, but you want to come visit Angela, walk into the church office in either door, and it'll be the far back right office. And we look forward to her settling in there and being able to care for all of our students from birth to 18 and all those wonderful congregational life events like this Sunday's gathering Sunday, uh, Christmas concert, all those types of, not the concert, but the reception after um, and before. We're so grateful to her and all of her creativity and leadership. And so part of that is we've named how my responsibilities are being shifted and covered by others, but we wanted to talk a bit about what it'll look like with my relationship with the congregation moving forward. So Pastor Ann is here to talk a bit about that, and I will chime in from time to time as well. So Calvary, um, as we are grieving that Morgan is no longer going to be a pastor here for and with our congregation. Um, we're also celebrating and affirming that Morgan, you are a pastor, that's who you are, and that you have those gifts, and that you're finding new ways to let those thrive in the world. And I've heard Morgan say a couple of different times, her hope with her new company, Present Nomads, is to be a support so that pastors can and so that you, Morgan, can thrive in your own calling with your gifts. And so we have this amazing opportunity. Uh, we're very fortunate that as Morgan is transitioning from not being a full-time pastor on staff, we are able to contract with present nomads uh, to serve in several different capacities uh, over the next several months. Um, one of the key ways that you'll um, see Morgan and that she will be assisting our staff is through parental leave coverage for Pastor Alice. Um, and that will involve some of the more public roles of seeing Morgan's um, face with us on Sunday mornings, her preaching voice. Um, you might see her giving a welcome during worship or leading a pastoral prayer. 
Uh, and you may be saying to yourself, well, isn't that what Morgan does now on Sunday mornings? Yes, and she does a lot of other things on Sunday mornings too behind the scenes right now that you don't see that she will not be doing uh, this summer. So if you see Morgan on a Sunday morning, um, think of her uh, this summer, after June 2nd, before she's free range. <laughs> Literally free range. Um, but think of Morgan as like a guest pastor in our midst. And, and I don't mean that like we don't know you, right? We can't fake that like, oh, we've never seen you. But just in the sense of Morgan is here fulfilling a pastoral function through preaching, through prayer, through worship leadership, offering her gifts and skills, really to help our staff and to help our worship community through the summer in um, Pastor Alice's absence of sprint and leave. Um, so that'll be a little bit different on Sunday mornings just in terms of um, how you interact with her. She's still Morgan, she still wants to talk to you and say hi, but it'll just be different. Um, also, she will be helping us with our new deacon leadership training. Um, Morgan has immense gifts in organizational training, um, seeing the big picture, really like honing in on what groups of leaders need to be healthy and well, how to think collaboratively together. Um, and because this is a brand new structure for us, and Morgan has been with us on the journey and was instrumental in getting us started on the journey and leading us through it, we're just really grateful to continue to have your gifts as President Nomads now, helping us figure out, okay, we voted and we have these new deacons, now what does this look like? So um, especially those of you who are our 14 new deacons, you'll be seeing Morgan this summer as well through that capacity as President Nomads. Um, Morgan will also be serving um, with a contract to help with communications, and we've already begun to make that transition, so you're used to the communications form, but if you're not, uh, we hope that you'll get used to using the communications form. Um, you can find that in the e-news and other places uh, where we've talked about how best to get your event advertised. But Morgan will be helping us with those aspects as a different part of her contract as present nomads, as well as providing coaching for Angela and her new role. And so we're so grateful to have someone who is gifted and experienced, particularly in the areas that Angela is growing into, to take Angela's gifts and her creativity and how she plans to lead those ministries and for Morgan and you to be there as a coach, a guide, an encourager, offering that wisdom. So those are some of the ways that uh, Morgan behind the scenes and in front of us will be uh, serving in this new capacity. Um, before I talk a little bit more about the boundaries and how things are shifting, is there anything you want to say about present nomads at your new company and what you're all about? Sure. So I will be essentially um, offering ways to support growth, healing, and creativity for individuals, organizations, and congregations. And so that will look like coaching, consulting. I am actually very grateful to Evergreen Association. Uh, Reverend Sam has invited me to be one of their NUMA consultants for pastoral practice. So if you were to head over to the Evergreen Association website and go to their NUMA page, you would actually see my face um, as one of their consultants. And so it could be organizational. Uh, my background in social work is community practice. So that's organizations and systems. So I'm grateful to be able to lean into that in a different way. And then a big piece, I hope, uh, of what I'll be doing is free range pastoring. Um, and for me, free range pastoring is essentially how do I help pastors get to pastor? Because as Anne can tell you, uh, the organizational side as well as the uh, just structure of being a nonprofit can sometimes keep you from getting to do the pastoral work. And it doesn't mean that a pastor would be handing that off to me, but maybe there's something that they could contract with me for a period of time that allows me to support them so that they can do the needed work um, that's before them. So for example, we just went through the whole lay leadership restructuring and discernment. We were able to do that in large part to our amazing lay leadership and because we have three full-time pastors. Not all congregations have that kind of pastoral team. And so if somebody uh, knew that they were headed into that type of season, they could potentially contract with me and I could help behind the scenes with uh, small groups, um, program logistics, communications, 
creative storytelling, or if they needed an outside person to help them actually figure out how to navigate that change, they could work with me. So that's free range pastoring. More often than not, congregations won't see me because I'll be behind the scenes. Uh, but you, Calvary, will be one of the few congregations that sees me out front as interim and leaf coverage will be things that I offer, but won't be my main source of connection with congregations because my hope is to allow pastors to stay in the pastorate longer by offering them reprieve, uh, which means they won't meet somebody out front because they'll be out front. And so that's what I will be doing with present nomads. And I'm so grateful that it also allows my transition after a decade with you all to be a slower transition and not as abrupt. And so if at any point um, in the future you see me, it's likely because Ann or um, staff relations have contracted with me. And so the relationship may get to be open in some ways. And for that, I'm very grateful. Thank you, Morgan. Um, so you've been here a really long time, 10 years, a decade which means you have a lot of knowledge about this physical space, this building. You have a lot of knowledge um, about how things work. You have a ton of like personal pastoral knowledge about our families and our beloved members here. And that Calvary, it's, it's one of the hard things when a pastor leaves is that you have like 10 years of relationships, 10 years of institutional knowledge and history um, ministries that have flourished, that you have started, your leadership and all of that. And that can be hard to let go of, right? To say, well, Morgan has always been the pastor that I've texted when I'm not feeling well or before my surgery or because I just wanted to check in with somebody and know that they were praying for me. Or Morgan has always been the one, and let's be honest, for several of us in the office, if we need something, we go to work, Morgan, where is this? Where can I find this? Or can you help me with this? And you have been so gracious to be that person for our congregation and staff. And this is where Calvary things are, are changing for us with our relationship with Morgan. She is no longer a pastor on our staff. That means that if you have surgery coming up, if you want somebody to pray with you, if you um, just are going through a hard time and need to talk to a pastor, Morgan is no longer um, somebody that you will text or call or reach out to in that capacity. That does not mean Morgan does not love you. That does not mean she doesn't care about you. That doesn't mean that the times that you have uh, texted or called Morgan over the past 10 years, that those weren't real or that she, you know, that, that was somehow just a transactional pastor member relationship. None of that is, is true. What's true is that Morgan is now serving in a lot of ways a new congregation, right? D different people, different churches in different ways. And um, so we need to give Morgan that space and autonomy to grow in those ways. And Calvary, we have to adjust to the pastors we now have on staff. So that's just a gentle reminder to let you know that if you reach out to Morgan, she has agreed to help set these boundaries and remind us. We know that, it, you know, it's not going to be just necessarily an easy thing for us to remember. But she may respond to your text message, hey, thanks for letting me know about that. I'll be directing you to Pastor Ann or Pastor Alice, and they can carry that forward. Um, anything you want to say about boundaries with communication? First? Yeah, you're most welcome to continue to like share updates about life. Um, or if you need a uh, if you need assistance with a technological device that is not here at Calvary, right? Um, uh, please reach out, and I like I'm here to still be in community with you all. It's just going to look different. But if at any point it feels like, ooh, I'm starting to cross that boundary of what pastors Anne and Alice should be doing. I will hold that boundary and just say, hey, we've kind of crossed over that. Um, I'm going to redirect us, but know that here's how we can continue to be in communication or in relationship. So with any change, right, there's going to be moments where it's like, ooh, I crossed a line there. I'm so sorry. And I'll name that with Ann and Alice and say, hey, I probably crossed a line here. I'm really sorry. Uh, please know I'll be mindful of that moving forward. 
And that's just how relationships in healthy spaces in Calgary, thankfully, we are a healthy congregation and a healthy staff where we get to have that. Um, and so just know that if there is a way to continue supporting you that is not pastoral, uh, you're welcome to reach out and I will be the one to, to navigate that boundary. Um, and part of that is so that Anne and Alice can establish their own dynamic. We've been a trio for six years and now it's going to a duo and I want to make sure that they have that connection and um, rapport with you all in a new way. And so that's the other reason we'll be holding that boundary. And along those lines, if you have any question, like before you just reach out to Pastor Morgan, if you want to ask me or Pastor Alice, like, hey, is this an appropriate thing to ask Morgan? You can do that as well. That's another way to kind of, you know, we'll be in contact and can help with those boundaries. Um, that said, any questions that are like programmatic or about the building or where do I find this or that, please direct those to me or Pastor Alice or Bobby and we will do our best to answer you. And if we really don't know, and we're thinking to ourselves, Morgan knows. Morgan has graciously given me permission to contact her and say, hey, Morgan, I have a question. But we want all of that funneled through me, you know, one or two people in the office, maybe if I happen to be out, but not all the congregation members just inundating Morgan with random questions. Um, the other thing I, I wanted to encourage you, Calvary, is to say, you know Morgan, you know her gifts, you know her talents and skills. If you know communities, maybe like you have grandkids or children who live in different parts of the country who you know their church is going through a transition or can use some leadership coaching in some way. Um, Morgan mentioned this, but a lot of what she is going to be doing can be done online, remotely. Tech support, e-news support. Um, some of us I, I know are from like smaller rural areas originally, and maybe those churches need help getting newsletters started and stuff. That's the exact kind of work that Morgan will be doing, and I know she would love your referrals. Um, if you know of situations or churches that could, could use her gifts in that way. Also, if you have a staff, if you work at a nonprofit or a for-profit, or um, have any kind of organization that you're a part of, maybe through your volunteer work where you need organizational team building or some staff development, that's also a great way to use Morgan's gifts. So I encourage you to reach out to present nomads for that as well or personal coaching. Um, Morgan mentioned she's working on getting a uh, It's the um, accredited certified coach through the International Coaching Federation, ACC. That, yes. <laughs> and she's already like coaching people and taking people now and would love to um, help you. And Morgan, tell us, what kind of person might need coaching or what? I mean, really anyone. Um, coaching's great if you're like, therapy's not for me, but I need to work on something, right? Um, or if you're at a place where you're trying to discern where do I go next or how do I address this thing that I just can't seem to make progress on, having a professional coach to journey with you, ask questions, make connections, uh, can be really helpful. Um, the type of coaching I do is not a pre-slated, here are the steps to success, but really allowing you to reconnect with the internal wisdom that's already within you uh, by asking questions around curiosity and how you could actually make action. And so each session ends with what are you going to do with what you wanted to bring to this session? And then how are you actually going to achieve it? So it's not just this theoretical thing, but you will have pragmatic steps that you have decided upon to move forward in. So that could be a, I've worked with teenagers when it's trying to figure out a better process around homework and life and school balance, uh, deciding about school and college, professional um, career decisions, as well as personal uh, processing around uh, caregiving and theological coaching. Uh, sometimes you have a theological question that needs to really be examined. So those are just some examples. And then kind of as we wrap this up, talk to us about um, your church membership and your family's involvement here at Calvary, what that's gonna look like over the next couple of weeks, and then, yeah. 
So I will keep my Baptist membership here at Calvary Baptist Church Denver. So I will be a fellow church member. Uh, the trick, though, because I had been full-time pastor, is you won't see me in the same ways. Um, I'm still trying to figure out and discern the ways I can support uh, the ministries here without being out front and uh, in leadership. And so that's still getting percolated um, and coming to clarity. But with that, from time to time, you may see me around as an attender. If somebody has passed, I will probably be at their memorial service um, and things along those lines. The other piece to note that probably uh, more disappointing to the majority of you is not that I won't be here, but that means my family won't be here. So my family, Julian Mavis and Ian's last Sunday here at Calvary Baptist Church of Denver is June 2nd. So while you will see me over the summer helping with Pastor Alice's leave, you won't see my family. Um, we are heading to try out and, and probably stay at Abiding Hope Lutheran for our worshiping experiences as a family. That said, uh, from time to time, you may see us on a Christmas or an Easter when you have other folks coming in um, and it's more of a celebration type gathering. You may see the four of us um, come back because we want you to be able to stay connected with our kids um, if that's something you want. So, and we'll be over in the Columbine area. We're not moving. That's been a question. Like we are not moving from the metro area. Uh, we actually, this is home and this is where we will be for the foreseeable future. It just will look a little bit different. Um, I am also working on having my ordination recognized with Evergreen Association on behalf of ABC USA. Uh, so there may be some follow-up with that here and there because that process was started while I was a pastor. And I think most of that will be behind the scenes, but you may see things out front from time to time, but we'll let you know. Um, otherwise, you'll, you won't see me too often. Uh, but because I'm a church member, uh, it opens the door in a different way. And Calvary, I've assured Morgan um, that she is always welcome here, and your family is always welcome here. And this is a learning process for all of us, and especially for Morgan and her family. To, and for a lot of pastors, they don't have to stay in the same place, you know, the same city where their church was. So just know that we've learned a lot this year about flexibility and agility. Um, when we need to change boundaries, like we may discover that we've set some boundaries that are working for us in two or three months. We reevaluate and say this now feels good for um, Calvary's relationship with Morgan and vice versa. So um, we will keep you updated on all of that. But um, Morgan, we're so grateful for your uh, 10 years of ministry here. And we look forward to your gifts as president of Reds in a new capacity. And Calvary, I hope that you will be here on June 2nd. Uh, for Morgan's last Sunday, uh, we have a wonderful celebration and luncheon planned. Um, just, a, just a time to really soak in the gifts that you've shared with us, Morgan, and to celebrate all that has been, and to give thanks that God brought you to Calvary and that we have formed this community together. So Calvary, I hope June 2nd is on your calendar. So if any of this doesn't make sense, because with transition, there's going to be things we forget to name or that aren't clear. And we're trying to be as clear as possible with what we know. But as Anne said, some things may come up that we just couldn't have predicted or forgot to address. Ask. Ask questions. Those of you who have already been so gracious to be like, hey, this wasn't right in the newsletter or this was weird in the email. Thank you for naming that. Because in the transition of me still doing some things and shifting, it's been great practice to just name things with each other without blame or uh, making it more than just a mistake. And so I invite you all to keep doing that, not just with me and in this transition, uh, but with any of us. We're in community and there's going to be times where we just don't know or can't see all the options. So thank you for the ways that you've gently brought that to our attention and helped us get better in the process. 
So thank you for the questions, thank you for the ministry, and thanks for hearing this update so you know how I'll be around, but not around as the months continue. Uh, just, yeah, thank you for the chance to be one of your pastors, Calvary. It's been a great gift. And a part of this, midweeks will be shifting as well. This is your first but not last announcement that midweeks over the summer will take a Sabbath. Last year, we did it for the month of August. This summer, because of Pastor Alice's leave and all the transitions, we're going to be taking the whole summer as a sabbatical, or I guess it's sabbatical three months. Yeah. Midweeks taking a sabbatical, friends. And it will return, but linked in the email that you access this video from is also the playlist to all our other midweeks. So you can go back and still have that midweek practice of something to nourish and encourage you throughout the rest of the week. Thanks so much, Calvary. And again, if you have any questions, let us know. It's different. It's different. It's for sure. Uh, act like a difference. After this, no fudge bucket. She's already on leave. Oh. Take two. <laughs>